Alright guys, this is my 90 gallon setup. So, what I have in here, I have four of these guys. These are Mayan cichlids. Another species I have is a wild Oscar. He's pretty much the king of the tank. He kind of chases uh, everyone around. Pretty dull looking guy, but that's what these uh, wild Oscars look like. Uh, another fish I have down here is a brown bullhead, also known as a mud cat. And another species right back in here, there you go, is a uh, giant pleco or a self and catfish. You could buy these at the store, at any pet store, but this one I didn't buy. Usually probably for that size, a uh, specialty shop might sell that guy for about 20 plus dollars. And the last species that was wild caught is this guy. Where'd he go? He's hiding right back there. It's a bluegill. And it's pretty much about... Uh, average size of uh, most bluegill that you catch. It's about a uh, six inch bluegill. And uh, I also have this is guy at, there you go. This is a full grown male OB peacock. Let's see if I can get him turned sideways. Hmm. So yeah, most of these fish pretty much hit the 7, 8 inch mark. And uh, my buddy actually caught this guy. We were nighttime fishing and he caught it off a uh, red uh, crawfish crankbait. Pulled this guy in, we threw it in a bucket and I threw it in a tank. And this guy right here, he was caught off a 164 ounce jig head with like a uh, chartreuse uh, grub as well as uh, the two bigger Mayan cichlids. This guy back here and that guy right there. They were caught off of a uh, 164 ounce jig heads. The bluegill was also caught off a 164 ounce jig head and pretty much they all had the same trailer basically a little uh, chartreuse grub. The Oscar and that Mayan and that Mayan were caught off a 1 16th ounce rooster tail, uh, a silver one. Pretty much all of these fish besides the pleco were caught off of uh, ultralight setups. But uh, I left it bare bottom here. Just because uh, having these fish, they uh, have a very large bio load. So just by having that helps it keep uh, the tank cleaner, easier for me to clean, and uh, also more water volume. Uh, most of these uh, 
slates and uh, bricks. I got uh, the bricks I got at Walmart. Paid like under a buck a piece for them. The uh, little uh, slates. I've got these at uh, specialty shops. You know, I got a whole pound for five bucks. Uh, driftwood. I picked these up alongside a bank. And uh, I treated them, soaked them in water for about a month or so. Had them in various tanks, but these pieces of wood are very old. And, uh, you know, instead of going to the store spending 40, 60 bucks for pieces, I just uh, use the saw, cut them up, and uh, pick them on the side of the uh, banks on rivers and stuff. All the plants in here are fake. Um, I have a 30 gallon internal pump right here. I have a piece of driftwood with some fake plants zip tied to it. Uh, back there I also got a uh, Terminator Endo Skull. I actually got that from Loot Crate. It's like a subscription box for things like that. And back here I have one of those DIY sponge filters. I put that in there for uh, the increased bio load and also to help aerate the tank. Right here where the return is, I wrapped it up in fake plants kind of to hide the uh, pipe right there. But as you can see this is pretty much how I have my 90 gallon set up. Another reason why I keep it bare bottoms for the uh, big pleco. So that way it can move around easier and I try to create this tank so that the pleco could go around this piece of driftwood go throughout here and can turn through here so that's why I have it set up that way and other fish they have plenty of you know cover places to hide And then uh, I'll show you what I have down below. So this is my sump. Um, go ahead and put some light in here. Alright. So basically this is an old sump. I ordered parts off of eBay for a 20 gallon long and basically silicone it together and created this and I used uh, pieces of a uh, sign to make uh, baffles so the water comes through here flows down through here and I kinda made like a stand for the filter media to sit above so there's water flowing through here I used um, like a light diffuser you could pick this up big sheet over at Home Depot or Lowe's and then I have different pieces of uh, media a couple ceramic uh, rings bio balls sponges of different courses and uh, also uh, a bunch of sponges you know, Walmart sponges the little dollar packs that is the number one thing I go to now so as the water flows through here it gets pushed up because I also have a air stone underneath so it helps push the water up 
goes up here, flows over, goes down, and I have a big air stone that runs across the bottom here. And it's a lot of turbulence right here. And the water pushes through this. Uh, it's actually a tank divider. And I turned it into a uh, algae scrubber. So basically I grow algae on it. And that is a big help for controlling the uh, ammonia, nitrates, nitrates. So I can actually feed heavily if I want but uh, I don't overdo it but this is the area where I grow the algae and I have a light that runs 14 hours a day which is connected to that timer I also have the pump the little 30 gallon internal pump connected to the timer too so both of these run 14 hours a day and shut off now the water it runs through here, overflows here. I got another piece of block sponge right there. Flows down through there. Um, if I wanted to, I could put a aquarium heater right down through there. I used to have one there when I uh, kept the tank indoors. And then it goes through here. I have a big sponge uh, from a sponge filter connected to a internal or submerged pump which pumps uh, about 850 gallons per hour and goes right up through here I have a ball valve and right back into the tank and uh, basically to control um, you know the protein film buildup right here because the water doesn't really move a lot. I just hooked up a air pump with a hose down there connected to a air stone. You don't need an air stone. You could just put the hose in there and I won't have any protein film built up because before I did this I would have it and it would be very thick by the time I would clean it out. But that right there is my sump. 20 gallon sump. And the way I had this set up is so I can add more water volume and utilize as much as I can. So if I were to take out all these things, I would have about roughly 10 gallons of water. So that, again, is uh, more water volume to the uh, tank here, which is always helpful because more water less maintenance in a way. Um, another great thing I wanted to share instead of going to the store and buying aquarium salt because they sell that for a lot of money just go to the grocery store buy kosher salt and it's the same thing and a whole lot cheaper so you do that save you some money it, it, there's a lot of things. Instead of going to aquarium stores and spending money like PetSmart, Petland, Pet Supermarket, those places, I've been there. And a lot of their products are way overpriced. This is just another helpful tip. You know, instead of buying aquarium salt, kosher salt, it's the same thing and a lot cheaper. Alright, so. Turn this guy off. I also keep this around too. It's one of those uh, things to pick up trash with. But I actually use this in my tanks. Uh, my 60 gallon and my 90 gallon. To just move things around and thing, uh, pick up things that drop. But uh, just another helpful thing to use. Look at this OB. Pretty nice looking guy. And he is mean. I think he's killed like a total of four peacock cichlids that I've had. But I do not want to get rid of him. So I'm going to leave him in here for as long as possible. 
I mean, yes, I do see a little bit of its fins a little frayed, but maybe eventually I'll get another tank, like a 55 gallon or 40 gallon breeder, get a few females and have this guy breed some uh, OBs. Because uh, I, in my opinion, I think this guy looks pretty good. You know, one of the better looking ones that I've seen around in many fish stores, pet stores. You don't see too many of these, especially this type. All these fish were caught in Florida. Now these Mayan cichlids, they are an invasive species in Florida. They're actually from uh, South America. same as the Oscar. They really look a lot different than the ones you buy in the store like the tiger, the velvet, albino tiger. Looks nothing like that and pretty much all the Oscars that I've caught almost have that same pattern except the uh, black and orange dots they vary on each but that light line that goes through their back part of the body it pretty much all looks similar on all of them also this self and catfish or known as a common pleco it's also an invasive species I've seen so many of these guys in canals, ponds in uh, small lakes. Now, this is also an invasive species too. Look at this guy. And usually what I feed these guys is just some uh, cichlid pellets. Oh yeah, they know. They know. Look at this. Soon that catfish is going to smell it and come right out. Yep, even the cell thing catfish. See, I've thrown some algae pellets in here, and I don't think that catfish eats it. I mean the pleco. I'm not sure, but...
I can't believe this guy was caught off the crank bait. Because that's just odd. And it was in the lips, too. It wasn't like hooked on the side or anything like that. So weird. I've actually caught uh, a big four pound tilapia off a of crankbait. And that's not something they go after. There's that bluegill. It's starting to warm up. It's got a little gash right there on the nose. It used to be a lot worse, like bloody red and ripped open. But it's healing nicely, and he's eating. He hasn't kind of noticed me yet to uh, come up to the top of the tank and eat, but he'll eventually get there. So, again, this is my 90 gallon setup. My, I want to say native because they were caught here locally. Yeah, 90 gallon native tank. Wild caught species, besides the uh, OB peacock there. But, if you like this video, Hit that like button, subscribe, comment, tell me what you like, you don't like about what I have set up here. Got any questions, feel free to ask. And as always, tight lines and keep fishing.